Okay, hi everyone. I'm glad you guys all showed up. It's always nice when there's more than one of me here. So <clears throat> this is character creation. Uh, I'm Nancy Bell. I write under Nancy M. Bell, uh, only because there's another author with my name who published before I did, and uh, it got a little confusing after a while. Uh, so I live near Balzac, Alberta, which is um, kind of between uh, Calgary and Airdrie with my husband and numerous critters. Uh, a member of the Writers Guild of Alberta. I presented at Surrey International Writers Conference, uh, at the Writers Guild of Alberta Conference, When Words Collide, and Word on the Lake. Um, I have publishing credits in poetry, fiction, nonfiction. Uh, recently, my work was included in Tamarack's Canadian Poetry for the 21st Century and Vistas of the West Anthology of Poetry. Um, I've also had poetry included in the University of Holden, Cuba in their Canada-Cuba Literary Alliance program. Welcome newcomers. Uh, I'm just going through my sort of intro here. Um, I have 20 published novels uh, published traditionally, um, some short stories on top of that and some other poetry that's published. I currently am with BWL Publishing, um, both as an author and I also um, do some acquisitions for them as well. I also do uh, freelance editing and uh, just sort of writer's coaching. So uh, if you guys have any questions, you can put them in the chat and I will keep an eye on that and answer them as I can. And then let's just get started. So please, if you have questions, just put them in the chat. So characters, we all need them. We all have to have them. Otherwise, our stories are kind of pretty boring. So a good story or novel consists of of these things, a storyline or plot, a well-crafted backdrop or world, and characters who grab the reader by the throat and will not let them go, because otherwise people put your book down and that's totally what we don't want. So where as an author do we find these feisty characters? And how do we go, how does one go about convincing them to be part of our story? I don't know about you, but my characters tend to take on a life of their own. Um, sometimes they wake me up in the middle of the night and demand that I, get up like right now and write them because otherwise I lose what they're trying to tell me. I know other people um, base their characters on celebrities. I, I have a friend who is writing a, a novel and she's, her, you know, her main male character is based on uh, Sean Connery. So there's that to it. I personally have trouble with that because I, I have trouble with separating the image of say Sean Connery from his personality when I want my character to have a different personality. But if it works for you, go ahead. Um, so in a word, our characters come from ourselves. Nobody writes, um, nobody creates a character that isn't somehow part of us. Uh, I was in a, a meeting talk. So it was a small group of us talking at Surrey one year and um, Diana Gabaldone was saying how she had been at a book club early in her career and two or three ladies were discussing how much they hated Black Jack Randall and I'm sure um, Outlander is very popular right now so I'm sure most of you know who Black Jack Randall is but he, he's, a, he's not a nice character and she kind of she said I was kind of smiling to myself because Black Jack Randall was sitting in the room with him because he is part of Diana. She created him. So that's um, something to keep in mind. I thought that was um, rather enlightening when she said that. So our characters all come from us, some aspect of our characters. Um, some characters will be front and center, leaping up and down and shouting at you. Others will be more reticent and need to be coaxed into the limelight. But make no mistake, they are all products of our imagination and fertile mind. Um, as I was saying, there are some who wake you up in the middle of the night. There are some who, while well, you're sitting there staring at your blank screen, refuse to give you anything. Um, for me, creating my characters is, is rather a, a symbiotic uh, sort of sort of um, exercise. And I don't know, um, everybody's different, of course, so I'm sure you guys all have your own sort of processes that you go through. Um, sometimes I find that I have, a I have a problem within my, my story and a character will just show up to solve it for me without me actually uh, thinking about it. When I was writing uh, Laurel's Quest, uh, which, is, which is it's a YA and the girl has to solve a, a, a riddle in order to achieve her goal. 
And I needed her to get a certain clue in the kind of in the middle sort of two thirds of the story. And I wasn't sure how I was going to get it across to her. And all of a sudden, this little character showed up in the fireplace. He was a fire salamander. It's a, a fantasy, obviously, um, and gave her the clue. And I was like, yeah, all right, then. And if, if you uh, have ever seen the Geico commercial with the little um, whatever he is, little guy there, well, that's what this fire salamander looked like, except he was red with blue eyes. So sometimes we get gifts. Um, and they help to move the plot forward. Some characters, um, you know, as we're doing editing, maybe it's a, a secondary or a third, you know, kind of peripheral character will end up on the cutting room floor during edits, but never throw anything away because we may need to use that character later on. Or if it's, especially if it's a series, he, you may find that, oh, he didn't work here, but he fits in over here. So never, never throw anything away that you write, just have kind of a little slush folder where you put stuff that doesn't work right now. Because often those characters sometimes create a story of their own. So you're sitting and you're going to, you know, thinking about your novel or thinking about your story and how we're going to do it. So decide what characters you need to tell your story. What story do you have in mind? Um, what genre is it? What's the setting? What characters are going to fit into that? Who is going to be your main character? Who's, whose basic point of view are you going to tell this from? Are they male? Are they female? Are they animal, mineral, plant, whatever gender, gender, sorry, whatever gender or sort of phylum they, they want to come from because, you know, a lot of people write speculative and uh, fantasy and sci-fi. So your main characters don't necessarily have to be human, obviously. Um, how many secondary characters do these main characters, usually there's two main characters. How many secondary characters do you need to sustain the plot and move it forward and how do you need them to interact with your main characters and the world around them? Are they going to be supportive? Are they going to be um, adver adversary? So you kind of figure now, we've, okay, we know who our characters are. We've decided, you know, we need two main characters and you've decided who they are. And then kind of you got an idea of who's going to be in behind their kind of helping them out and, you know, handing them the sword if it's a Dungeons and Dragon thing or whatever. So components of, um, of your strong main character, they have to be believable. They have to be strong. They have to be capable of believable dialogue and consistency. So they can't, they can't kind of just switch in mid stride and, and become something that they weren't before. Um, obviously the only reason that could happen was if, that particular thing so serve to drive your story forward but you still want to keep the basis of who they are constant so believable strong good dialogue and consistency of character so let's look at these a little bit more closely we can't really go into them in like a great detail because zoom only gives me 40 minutes but it'll give you an idea so Believable. So you need to be familiar with the persona of the person of your character. So if you're not, if you've decided to write something that you're not totally familiar with, which is totally fine. Like we don't always have to write what we know, although that is easier. Then you need to do some research and make sure that you have the underlying facets of this character correct. Like if your main character is a cyborg, say, and, and you don't really know exactly how that works, or your main character is a, a brain surgeon, and you need to be totally um, sure of sort of how they're going to act, because they're professionals, obviously. So how are they going to act professionally? How are they going to act in their private life, which can be totally different, but they're all aspects of your character. So you have to get the whole rounded area of your character, your whole persona together. So believable, your character has to be strong. They have to distribute, exhibit strong character types, which doesn't mean they have to be strong physically or emotionally. They can be like a shattered wreck, but they have to be strong enough and have a strong enough presence on the page and in your story that they hold your reader's 
attention. So it means whatever traits you give them, the character has to be invested in them. So they can't, can't be kind of a wishy-washy, yeah, maybe I'm going to do this today, maybe tomorrow I'll be something else. You need that main character or characters, if there's two, to be strong enough to carry your story forward. If your character is an emotional mess, and this is a coming of age or finding yourself, learning to believe in yourself novel, the character has to stay true to type and let you lead them through the metamorphosis while you move them through your plot against the backdrop of the world you've created. That's the, the hazards of doing this from home, I'm afraid. Um, so you have to also have created your world. And this really isn't about world creation. But be, before you get these characters and start sticking them in, you need to have created your world. If it's a contemporary and it's the world around us, that's great because that's easy. Although you still have to be cognizant. You know, if it's a city, then you need to be familiar with this, whatever city you're in. Or if it's a, a rural, you need to be you know, well aware of all the aspects of that. So your characters have to fit into and, and have your, the world they're in complement them. Your dialogue needs to be believable. So if your character is a rough and tough type, you know, maybe he's a mercenary with the mercenary guild or, or maybe he's the brain surgeon, but the dialogue should reflect that. So contractions, slang, and lingo common to the area you're writing in are important. So especially if you're writing historical, you want to make sure that any of the phrases that you use were actually in, uh, in use at that time in history, because there's various different welcome new people. You missed my dog barking, so good timing. Um, so slang, lingo, common to the area you're writing in. So you want to make sure, say you're writing um, Regency, that whatever words or phrases um, or slang that you're using were actually in, in use at that time and not earlier or later. Um, the same goes if you're writing like World War I, you wanna make sure that what you got in World War I wasn't something that maybe was more um, common in World War II, because it's easy enough when you're doing research to get confused about that stuff and to mix it up. And God forbid, if you go down the research rabbit hole, you have more research than you know what to do with. Um, if you're writing historical fiction of any sort, not just romance, but any sort of historical fiction, be sure you understand the speech patterns and cadences of speech pertinent to that time, because that's another thing. Um, you know, in, in certain eras, they didn't use contractions. So if you write contractions in, someone who, who reads that niche sort of religiously, is going to pick up on that and, and it will throw them off and, and perhaps throw them out of your story, depending on how nitpicky they are. So believable dialogue. You want to make sure that your dialogue and your character are in sync. So your consistency of your character. So unless you're writing, you know, maybe a murder mystery, and it's important to the plot that a good character suddenly turns bad, which is, a, you know, is a totally viable um, plot thing to do. It's important to keep your character consistent in how they react to the world around them and the other characters that inhabit it. So unless you've got, you know, you're doing that murder mystery or a mystery where you've got that big twist and reveal, you want to make sure your character stays consistent. And even if you're doing uh, that with the good guy turns is really the bad guy, you still want to make sure that his overall character arc is consistent. You know, like maybe when he's being the good guy, there will be little instances where, you know, the little devil on his shoulder shows up. So you just want to make sure the character arc, no matter what you're writing, is consistent. So the next thing is, does my character have to be likable? Good question. They don't have to be. But what they do have to do is stay true to themselves as you have created and portrayed them. So... If you're writing, say, Jack the Ripper or Hannibal Lecter from their point of view, obviously they're not likable characters. So your reader doesn't have to like them. But the character you've created out of that persona has to be strong enough to carry your story and to hold your reader's attention. Even if it's just like, oh, my God, I wonder what he's going to do next, which is, you know, all part of that thriller genre. 
it's hard to have a like an unlikable main character in fiction just because it's it's harder to get your reader to connect with an unlikable character so that's when you're thinking about how you're going to craft your story and how you're going to create your characters and how they're all going to work together these are things that you know you as as the author need to kind of hash out um nonfiction of course is different um you know you if, when you're writing nonfiction, you're you're basically writing from facts so if somebody picks up a novel on Jeffrey Dahmer they know they're not going to like the main character which is fine um, I would suggest if you're writing fiction that you keep your unlikable characters to a secondary role in the plot it's just easier and it works better as as you're trying to work things through and it definitely makes it more um, marketable and it will help with reviews um, your unlikable secondary character can be a foil for the main characters or a catalyst to move the plot forward and provide an element of tension. And that's, that's pretty much where I would suggest using them. But again, we're all different authors and I can only give you what works for me. So secondary versus main characters. What's, what's kind of the difference there? So while your main characters carry the brunt of the story, the supporting cast is very important. Your main characters can exist in a world that's void, that, you know, it's just them and the world, because that would be extremely boring to read and extremely boring to write. A lot of thought go needs to be put into the secondary characters. How are, how important are they going to be to the story? Because you're going to have some that are, are super important, like say in the Lancelot uh, saga where, or sorry, the, Arthur, King Arthur saga, where Lancelot is very important, but where some of the other knights, um, Sir Gawain and Mordred, well, Mordred's very important, but um, are more peripheral. So you need to figure out which of your secondary characters are going to interact the most with your main characters and how are they going to do that? Where do you need them to interact? At what points in the story do you need these secondary characters to give your main character a kick in the butt? to move things forward and, you know, get things going. And whether it's, you know, he tells a secret or he decides to sleep with somebody's wife. Um, where do you need them to interact? What purpose do they serve? Don't just create characters because, oh, I think I want five whatevers. They, every secondary character or beyond that character that you create, peripheral character, has to have a reason to be there. And you need to know what that reason is. Um, how are you going to weave them into the story? Because you need them there. You know, like Ron and Hermione in the Harry Potter series are all woven all through. And they're, they're very strong, obviously, secondary characters. Or do you have some that just pop in and out as you need them? And that will also work. But again, they need to be well-rounded characters, even if they only play a small role. So the same aspects that we discussed with the main character also apply to the secondary characters. So your secondary characters also need to be believable and strong. And again, not, I, not necessarily physically or emotionally, but strong in presence. Um, they, their dialogue needs to fit with who or what they are, and they need to be consistent. So secondary characters also need those components um, you may be not going to spend as much time on them unless, say, they're as prominent as Ron, as Ron and Hermione in the Potters series. So you need to, to think about that. Um, point of view when creating a character. So point of view does matter. It, can, it will dictate how the reader views the world and the story through the character's eyes. So I'm only going to touch on first and third here. Uh, the, those are obviously the most um, popular ones. There's a ton of other POVs you can use, but a lot of them are not used very often. So first person POV, the reader interacts with the story and the world through only one person's POV, through one character's POV, which should be your main character, not a secondary. <clears throat> Although in speculative fiction, it could be the, through the POV of an inanimate object or a senti sentient item uh, like a spaceship that thinks. So, you know, it, nothing is, when you're writing, nothing is cut and dried and hard and fast. There is no black and white. 
it's whatever you can craft that works for the story and that your readers can relate to. The first person POV is necessarily fairly narrow as what you have to remember too when you're writing first person is the reader can only know what the one character feels deeply or thinks. So if you're in first person POV without coming out of that person, first person, you can't tell the reader what a secondary character is thinking or feeling. You could, you could have your main character deduce what they're thinking or feeling by their actions or their words, but you can't actually take the reader into their per, uh, point of view. Um, again, Diana does a good job in her novels of making sure that we always know that Claire is her main character, no matter, because she tells, you know, she tells Lord John's story, she tells um, Bree's story, she tells Jamie's story, but Claire's chapters are always in first person and all the other ones are in third person, which is a very subtle way of always reminding her reader that Claire is the main character in this huge, huge story arc she's created. So that's also a trick that you can use because you know we all steal from everybody else. That's how writers work. That's why we're a community. Um, third person POV, the reader will experience a more varied view of the world and other characters. You have the ability to put the reader into different characters' heads and let them experience events leading up to major turning points and actions to a different lens in the main character. Uh, they may have different concerns, express different fears than the main character, and it lets you develop a deeper, more colorful view of your story and of your world, which is why I personally prefer third person, but totally a personal choice. Okay, so some people get your characters just come whole cloth. Here, here, here they are. Let's go start our story. This is what we're going to do. Others need to um, craft their characters first, which is fine. So you start with a character questionnaire. And this works better for authors who are planners and not pantsers. Pantsers tend to, you know, jump in off the deep end and go for it. But it can be useful for both because lots of times pantsers run into issues because we are pantsers. So in the case of the pantsers, I would suggest um, that the exercise would just be less extensive than the plotter. So a few of the questions that you can put to yourself while working to create and develop your characters are, start with personal details, name, age, date of birth. Uh, you may not use all of this information in your when you're writing, but it gives you a solid base for your character in your own sort of mind and in your creativity. Um, you'll need to do a questionnaire for each character. Your main characters obviously are going to have a more in-depth and detailed one than your secondary characters and the peripheral characters. So name, age, date of birth, physical appearance. Are they tall, thin, fat, lame, disfigured in any way? Just depends on, on your story, basically. Um, height, weight, build, hair, eye color, distinguishing facial features. How do they dress? You know, and you want to make sure whoever they are that, again, the dress is uh, the same as it would be in an era if you're writing historical or, the, or that it's, it would be um, compatible with whatever profession you've given them. Uh, mannerisms, you know, so maybe you, one of your secondary characters has a tick where he pulls his ear all the time or he flicks his nose, those kind of things. Uh, which again, you can work in as, it just makes your characters more believable and it, it gives something for your other characters to play off of as well. Um, are they healthy? Are they sick? Then you go personality. Words or phrases they would commonly use. Do they have a catchphrase? You know, somebody says cowabunga all the time or whatever. Are they outgoing? Are they introverted? Do they have any bad habits? Do they smoke? Do they drink? Do they, you know, chase cars? Emotional status of each character, happy, sad, uh, their mental health, their emotional health. Are they affectionate? Are they huggers? Are they not? Uh, what is their strongest character trait? Which always takes some thinking, especially um, sometimes in secondary characters are harder than in uh, regular characters, main characters. What is their weakest character trait? Which is also hard sometimes to come up with. What are their political views? Especially if it's... Um, you know, kind of a somebody's plotting against a political system, those kind of things. 
Um, do they have any obsessions with anything? Um, family, friends and family of each character. Is it a big family? Is it a small family? Do they have a big circle of friends? Do they not have a, you know, maybe they only have one friend. Um, are they an orphan? Do they, you know, maybe were abandoned at some point? Do they have siblings? How many friends do they have? How many? How close? Do they have pets? Um, do they have hobbies? Just all these things. And again, you're probably not going to use every single thing that you kind of rake out of your brain here, but it does give you a really solid base for your character. Um, their past and their present. Were they rich or poor as a child? And how does this shape each character? Do they do childhood memories? Are they going to play any part in the arc of your story? Um, events in the past that might have affected the present, any trauma, um, things they might be ashamed of and want to hide, their love life. Um, are they in a relationship? Do they want to be in a relationship? Do they care? Um, did they just break up with someone? Are they happy alone? Um, sexual preferences? And again, some of the, not all of these are going to pertain depending on what you are writing. Um, conflict. How do they handle conflict? You know, are they thinkers? Do they, are they patient or do they just fly off the handle? Um, and again, for each character, this is going to be different. Um, work and hobbies. Do they have a job? You know, is he a, a knight errant or is he a store clerk? Um, and what that job entails, because what he does or he or she does for a living is going to color how they view the rest of the world and how they react with the rest of the world. You know, obviously, if you're a brain surgeon, you're going to re react and see the world differently than if you are a store clerk. And it's just there's nothing better or worse about either. It's just they're going to be different. Um, what do they do for fun? What do they want to do for fun? Um, Favorite things, make a list of things you think will work in your story. So, and this, this will change probably as your story um, progresses. I know lots of times I have uh, this idea, this is where my character is going and this is how my story is going to go. And then as I start writing, you know, sometimes my little secondary characters throw a wrench into things and I go, oh yeah, we could go over here and we could do this. And so that changes a lot of things. So just because you've written these things down doesn't mean you can't change them as your story evolves. And it should be fluid. You shouldn't, you know, get your tires stuck in the ruts and, and refuse to come out of there. Um, another thing is their spirituality. And again, depending on what you're writing, this will have a bigger or smaller impact on your characters. Um, how do they view the world from a religious point of view or are they pagans? And how, how does that um, sort of point of view and, you know, what religion they are or what sort of um, pagan path they follow is going to be different. And, and you can, you know, you could have within there, you create, you can create conflict between your characters as well. You know, maybe your main character is um, Catholic. And your other character is a Protestant. And if you're in, uh, say you're in uh, Scotland, in the Highlands, in, you know, the 45s, and Catholicism is not popular at that point. So you, you've, you've set up, and that's not obviously not the only place that that uh, is pertinent. I mean, Ireland in the 60s and early 70s was also had that issue. Uh, so just that point of view there that that sort of aspect of your character can create can be used to create conflict if that is what you wish so that's something to keep in mind and then how tolerant are your characters going to be um, if you know depending on how you want to uh, craft your story having them at loggerheads creates tension but at some point you need to um, sort of bring that to a close, however you wish to do that. So that's also another aspect of it there. So that's, I think we've got about, looks like nine minutes left. So um, Writer's Digest also has a sheet of work, shirt, work sheets on uh, character creation as well that you can find if you go to um, Writer's Digest and look for, um, character there's like a character cheat sheet i think they call it 
So just let me look at the questions here. So uh, Salem says, if a character reacts uncharacteristically when under pressure or when having episodes of mental illness, how do you let the reader know this is normal for them without obviously saying this character has a mental illness? Okay, good question. So that's, um, as you're crafting your character and when you're, you're sort of doing this under laying work here, you can, you could have their sort of, um, the unstable part of their personality come out in a dialogue or a narrative or something that a secondary character uh, would notice about them that your main character may not even be aware of but your secondary characters, because they are observing how these people, how this person reacts in different situations. This is where your secondary characters come in, where you can, and this is why I like third person too, because you can use that secondary character to let the reader in on secrets, basically. Things that maybe the main character isn't aware of or really doesn't want anyone within his sphere to know. Um, if does that help at all, I hope. Um, and then Robin says, what about the idea of character arc? Character develops changes. Definitely. And that would be something that when you're, when you're doing your story arc and then you do your character arc within that, that you would definitely. But your character, your basic character still has to stay um, consistent to himself. So yes, he's, he's going to develop and change. And, and that's what we want our characters to do. But you use, it can't be like a, a wholesale turnaround change, unless you have, um, you know, unless they're psychotic or something, which would be, you know, a thriller or a, a mystery, that kind of thing. But definitely character arc and character changes and develops are, are for sure important. Um, an example of that would be, if you have, uh, like, I have a, a novel releasing in September here, and the character is a young, uh, young cowboy, and he uh, is having, he's got a lot of family issues, and he finds his uh, release by getting drunk, which is not wise when you're riding bulls, however. Um, and so a number of different, uh, well, there's two main things that happen to him that kind of make him realize that this is not a wise thing to do. And this is, um, it's like a turning point where he realizes that he better smarten up or he's gonna end up dead. And he has some secondary characters that help him see that um, just by being supportive and, and kind of kicking him in the butt at, at the right times. So for sure, and so in the end, um, he's, he's, you know, decided that he knows it's not going to be easy and you don't just quit drinking, it, you know, when your father's an alcoholic as well, you don't just quit drinking and, you know, the sun comes out and everything's happy, but he's just, he's decided at that point that he needs to change. And so he's going to do the best he can, which doesn't mean he's not going to fall off the wagon or anything else, which is part of him being consistent to his character, but he has definitely had uh, a change of point of view, basically. I'd like to thank you guys all for coming and I certainly appreciate you guys being here and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend.